Suppose we have a sample space S and it's partitioned like this. And there's nothing necessarily fancy about this particular partitioning. So we'll say this is B1, this is B2, B3, and B4. And we can see that these are mutually exclusive, right? There's no overlap between them. And then there's also some event A that maybe overlaps. Then we find that the uh, theorem of total probability says this, that P of A would be equal to the summation of i equals 1 to 4. In this case, normally if you see in a book, they would have, say, k of these, and you'd go up to k. But this is the probability of the intersection of b sub i with a, which we know from my last video, then means each of these, because of the conditional probabilities, can be replaced with this. So how would we use that? Well, my last video, I did some examples involving breast cancer. So I had constructed this table, had some data, constructed this table, and said in 2021, the U.S., there's about 259 million adults, 124.32 million of those were men, 134.68 were women, and so forth. This percentage of those men, or this amount of those men, excuse me, this amount, will never get breast cancer in their life, this amount in millions will, this amount of women in million will never get breast cancer in life, this amount will. And then we use these to find the conditional probability of getting breast cancer given that you're a woman was 12.5%. Conditional probability of getting breast cancer if you're a man was 0.12%. And then we also found the overall probability of getting breast cancer if you're male or female was about 6.6%. .6%. So we could calculate this last one now using the theorem of total probability. So what we would get then would be the probability of breast cancer would be equal to the probability of breast cancer given that you're a man times the probability of being a man plus the probability of breast cancer given you're a woman times the probability of being a woman which was equal to 0 0.15 divided by the 124.32. These come off that table I just showed you. 124.32 out of 259 million plus 16.83 out of 134.68 times the 134.68 divided by 259 and that of course was equal to 6.6 percent that I showed you so this is another way of doing that and this really also shows that that formula is really just a weighted average of these conditional probabilities. If the number of men had been much smaller, let's say there was like one man for every thousand women, well then this contribution would be pretty small. And it would basically just be whatever the probability of getting breast cancer is given that you're a woman, then it would be closer to the 12.5% that we saw. Right? Now we can use this information to produce what's called Bayes' theorem. Now, if we were to have a sample space S, we were to have a partitioning of that with events B1, B2, dot, 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 BK. If we were to have another event A that's in S, and we want to know what is the probability of a specific event b sub x that's drawn from these given that we know a well then the formula is this the probability of b sub x given a is equal to the probability of a given b sub x times the probability of b sub x 
divided by the summation of all those probabilities, the B's for each A, right? So we have this right here, I is equal to one, so probability of A given B sub I times the probability of B sub I. So really just using this right here for all this. Now, it's more typical when you're introduced to Bayes' theorem to see it like this, that the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A given B, probability of B, and then probability of A. The way I remember the formula is to multiply through by the P of A. And so you also get this relationship, probability of B given A times the probability of A, see how those are the same, is equal to the probability of A, excuse me, given B, times the probability of B. Those are the same. So I just take this and then divide by the P of A and I get this formula right here. So how does that relate to what we've been talking about? Well, we can see then that in this case, we basically just have partitions B and not B, and then there's an A here that overlaps those. And so we get the probability of A then is equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B plus probability of A given not B times the probability of not B. So this would be our denominator here. And so if we go back to what I had a moment ago, these two here are down here, and then we're looking at the specific one we're looking at in the numerator. So from the breast cancer example, we saw that the probability of getting breast cancer, given that you're a woman, was about 12.5%. And the probability of getting breast cancer, given that you're a man, was about 0.12%. But what if we went the other way? And this is where you really see it. What is the probability that you're a woman, given that you have breast cancer? Well, you have to know this goes up because many people probably don't even know men can get breast cancer. You just think that if somebody has breast cancer, there's much better chance they're a woman than they are if a man. So to calculate this, then I get the probability of breast cancer given you're a woman times the probability of being a woman divided by the probability of getting breast cancer period is equal to the 0.125 or 12.5% times the probability of being a woman from that table, 134.68 divided by 259 divided by 16.98 divided by 259. That'll be our 6.6%. And this right here is about 99%. And then the rest then have to be the men that get it. So it has to be 1%. But just to show you the numbers, probability that you're a man, given that we know you have breast cancer, is the probability of breast cancer given you're a man times the probability of being a man divided by the probability of getting breast cancer period and that's equal to 0 0.0012 times 124.32 divided by 259 that's the probability of being a man divided by the same denominator 16.98 divided by 259 probably ought to have these which is about 1%. So you will often see this in scenarios where um, you say, well, you know, maybe for example, somebody tested positive for something. Well, there are false positives and false negatives. And so it turns out that even if you test positive for something, it may not be very good odds that you still have that particular thing that you tested positive for. It depends on the numbers involved. But it really shifts things around if you think about it. We went from the probability that you have breast cancer given that you're a woman is only 12.5% to the probability that you're a woman knowing that you have breast cancer is 99%. Substantially different. And I think for most people, you would expect these somehow to be tied together that, well, this is small, so this has to be small or whatever. 
As we can see here, that's not really true. So that was uh, Bayes' theorem.